Modern agriculture's greatest achievement has been to increase the efficiency of farms, allowing them to produce more and more food using fewer inputs. The result has been a world where the price of farm outputs like wheat and beef have fallen at the same time the world population has more than tripled. Think about that. We have three times more people than in 1900, yet the price of agricultural products is 60% lower, making food more affordable. Farms are more efficient today for many reasons. The most influential factor, I believe, is the fact that more efficient technologies have been developed and successfully adopted by large specialized farms. A farmer today is unlikely to spend her day milking cows, then feeding pigs, then planting wheat, then harvesting corn, and then weeding her patch of acorn squash. Instead, she will be more specialized. She will use advanced technologies like driverless tractors or automatic milking machines, and she will focus solely on producing one or few products. One farmer may raise cattle and wheat, while another may only operate a dairy farm, and another may produce solely cotton. In a sense, farmers have become more efficient because they employ what economist Paul Seabright refers to as tunnel vision. Farmers have focused on reducing their costs of production while maintaining or improving food quality. Likewise, consumers have focused on minimizing their food costs while still seeking more pleasurable eating experiences. Both producers and consumers are essentially focused on reducing the cost of inputs the farmer must purchase to produce food of the same quality or better. When a farmer reduces her per bushel cost of corn production by applying more nitrogen fertilizer, she is rewarded with larger profits. Consumers are also rewarded as lower farm costs leads to lower grocery store prices. Both consumers and producers are keenly focused on the farmer's cost of production and the quality of the food as perceived by the consumer. This tunnel vision has led to tastier foods at a lower price. Now you can argue that we eat too much or that consumers eat less healthy now, but one can't deny that it is the consumer who is making these choices for herself. This tunnel vision allows us to feed more people and deliver more smiles around the dinner table. At the same time, we know that there are other things in agriculture that matter, which are not part of this tunnel vision. If a farmer can lower her pork production costs by reducing the well-being of the pigs, she can do so even if the consumer would disapprove, as one cannot tell how a pig was treated by the taste of a pork chop. Beef has a higher carbon footprint than chicken, but this higher footprint is not fully reflected in the price of beef, and the consumer may be unaware of this fact. This means that consumers very concerned about global warming may not give carbon footprints much consideration when making their meat purchasing decisions. Most of the agricultural and food controversies today are an attempt to force us out of this tunnel vision and to think more about ethics when purchasing food and forming governmental policies. The organic food movement asks us to think about the pesticides applied on most farms and its effect on people and environment. Environmentalists want us to know the water pollution that can result from an irresponsible use of chemical and manure fertilizers. We are asked to step outside of our tunnel vision and think globally, where we consider how farm practices impact the world. We are asked to count for things that aren't reflected in farmers' costs of production, and thus not reflected in the grocery store price. We are asked to take a panoramic view of agriculture and to do our best to make sure the food we eat is indeed ethical food. To comply with this request is admirable, and almost everyone from the farmer to the urban shopper is doing so in some regard. To comply with this request is admirable, but it's also very difficult. Just think about how hard it is to know how the production of your cheeseburger impacts soil erosion, pollution of ponds, streams, rivers, and estuaries, welfare of beef cattle, welfare of dairy cattle, pesticides residues in food, global warming, social justice, and the like. It is an intimidating task to be sure because knowing the precise relationship between our diet, society, animals, and the environment 
is such a daunting endeavor, I say that this panoramic view of agriculture is also a blurry view. Think about it like this. With tunnel vision, close up you can't see the forest for the tree. With panoramic blurriness, from a distance, you can't see the tree for the forest. Now this should not discourage us from pursuing ethical food. Behaving ethically is never easy, and it is a rarity to know with complete certainty if any act is truly ethical. If we ban pesticides, it will reduce direct exposure to carcinogens, but we must ask whether that will increase cancer rates by increasing the cost of fruits and vegetables. If we buy free-range eggs, we never know for sure whether chickens raised outside, where mortality rates can be 25%, are happier than when raised in a crowded barn where mortality rates are more like 5%. If we adopt no-till farming practices to reduce soil erosion, we must then deal with the fact that this will increase our reliance on pesticides. Most of the time, we rely on our intuition for these decisions, as well as the claims of certain activists and businesses. Is organic food more environmentally friendly? Many people intuitively say yes, Many people have heard environmentalists say it is, but agricultural scientists are not so sure. Are chickens happier in a cage-free than a cage setting? Again, many people intuitively say yes. Many have also heard animal advocates say it is, but many agricultural scientists are not so sure. There's a tendency to believe that any attempt to break out of this tunnel vision, to instead take a panoramic view of agriculture, will lead to better food. We falsify equating good intentions with good outcomes. What we fail to recognize is that the blurriness of a panoramic view means we have to look beyond good intentions and make sure our actions translate into good results. For us to truly make ethical decisions, we must sharpen our intuition by thinking very deeply about subjects incorporating the findings of scientists and the logic of economics, and widen the diversity of our information sources. To support this idea, this lecture will consider the issue of how local foods affects global warming and the local economy. We will take two notions many local vores intuitively believe. One, buying local food always benefits the local economy. Two, Local food is associated with a smaller carbon footprint. In a previous lecture, we went on a tour of the Stillwater Farmer's Market, where we interviewed people on why they like buying food from a farmer's market. There was one part of an interview I didn't show you because I was saving it until now, where someone specifically referred to helping the local economy. Let me show that clip to you now so that you can see this is a topic of concern to some people. We, we like coming to the farmer's market because it puts more income in the local economy. You know, local businesses, local farmers get the money. You get this idea of income multiplication because they're going to spend their money locally and they share stuff with each other, and that's really good for, for, the, um, for the community. It's fun to see, you know, because Stillwater is a place you're invested in, and you want to support those people that are locally working hard every single day at, out at their farms and in their, in their communities, and you get to support them and able to just help them out a little bit, and it's, it's nice to do. Our readings will show that although the statements that, one, buying local food always benefits the local economy, and two, local food is associated with a smaller carbon footprint, could be correct in some settings. They are also incorrect in other settings. Again, the objective is not to discourage you from taking a panoramic view of agriculture. The objective is to arm your intellect with the results of scientific studies and economic logic. A panoramic view of agriculture will always be blurry, but this panoramic blurriness can be brought into greater focus by diversifying your sources of information, something I hope this lecture accomplishes.